So we're going to look at triangulation of data. And Mark was talking about assessment. And whenever we talk about assessment, we always go back to growing success. And in growing success, they talk about triangulation of data. So what does that look like? And what could it look like in primary? So when we talk about triangulation of data, we're talking about three things. Observation, conversation, and student product. And in the kindergarten document, they refer to those as what are the children saying, what are they doing, and how are they representing their thinking. So it's just a different way of thinking about that. So when we're thinking about our, our friends in primary, the first one is observation. What is it that the students are doing? What is it that I'm seeing them doing it? And because we know students, and not just primary students, but students learn and they, they actively construct their knowledge by doing things. The critical thing we have to remember as teachers, though, is if we are going to collect assessment data through observation and what the students are doing, then we have to be giving them really meaningful, purposeful things to do. So that's part of our programming. Secondly, student product. And student product doesn't just mean paper and pencil. It's how are students representing their thinking. It might be through manipulatives when we're thinking about math. It might be through drawing. It might be Play-Doh. It could be painting. There are lots of different ways that students can represent their thinking. And then we have conversation. So what are they saying to each other? as well as to the educators in the room. We know in primary, and especially with some of our immersion programs, we have to consider the student's vocabulary, is English a second language, all of those things. And that's why we have that triangulation happening. But we know that we use language to express our thinking. So why is this triangulation important? Well, not all students are going to demonstrate their learning in all three ways. But we can't just rely on student product, and we can't just rely on our observations. And I'm going to share with you two examples uh, um, from student work study teachers. Their jobs is to sit with the students, talking with them, and observing exactly what they do. And these are examples from math. So in the first one, um, we had the student product. And the student was doing three digit, subtract three digit, with two regrouping. And when you, we looked at the student work, the student had the correct answer. They had crossed out up above and put the smaller number and carried the one, or they had done it perfectly. So when the student work study teacher sat down and said, tell me about your work. And the student said, I'm rounding. I thought, well, what do you mean? Well, you have to round to a different number. Looking at the work, it looked like they totally got it. From the conversation, it looked like they got absolutely nothing. So there was a lot of, if we had only gone by, the student did this work, the student handed in their work, I would have marked their work and thought, wow, they got it, ready to move on. The, the assessment data shows that they, they understand the subtraction with regrouping. The conversation showed that they didn't, under, didn't seem to understand it at all. Was it the vocabulary? We weren't sure, we obviously needed to dig deeper. The other example was one I loved. Um, the students had a word problem that they were working on, and you know they had had it on their piece of chart paper that they were working with their partner on. And when the student work study teacher was there, she noticed that they had highlighted certain words in the problem. You know those key words, and they had circled the numbers. And again, student work study teachers. So, tell me about um, the problem. Do you, you know what? What do we? What do you know? And the student just looked at her and said, oh, I don't know, I haven't read it yet. They had learned that when you get a math problem, you look for those keywords and you circle the numbers. So when walking by, it looked like they had already read the problem, they had thought about it, and they had circled those keywords. No, they had figured out the trick is, you look for those words, you underline them, and you circle them, and the teacher thinks that you know what you're doing. And so that was their strategy. For today's purposes, we're just going to have one piece of student work. And I'm gonna set the context for you. This is a grade one piece of work. And the students were learning the strategy of using their five senses to visualize the story. And visualization would be a, a strategy that could help them comprehend the text. So this is something they'd been working on with their teacher, with visualization and using their five senses. So the success criteria were posted in the classroom. The learning goal was to write sentences to share my thinking. It's an independent reading. So after their independent reading, 
where they're using visualization in their senses, now they're going to write a response in their journal and the success criteria are there on the slide. You can see those, I'm not gonna read them to you. What I will do though is I will read <laughs> the sample of student work aloud to you because I know it didn't copy very well. So, the student read a book called Sharks and then in their response journal, I know some of you are fluent in primary, so you've already figured this out. But it says, I can smell the ocean. What is it? Then the next line says, the ocean smells like salt. And the last line says, I can see a shark. Okay, so I can smell the ocean. What is it? The ocean smells like salt. I can see a shark. So if we only had student product, if this is all you had, just taking a look at this, and you might want to use the pink sheet from this morning in terms of looking at vocabulary, word, sentence, and structure. Just looking at the student work, what do we think that we know about this student as a reader and a writer? So let's take five minutes for that. Okay, so just looking at the student product, if I had nothing else to go on, just curious, what are some of the things that you were noticing? Margo, thank you. They, uh, they know some vocabulary words like ocean and salt and shark. Yes. Yeah, so we noticed that some of the vocabulary they're using is fairly sophisticated for grade one. Anything else you noticed? Shelley. So we know they're spelling words correctly, we're just, we're, because we only have product, we don't know what the strategies are that they're using to get there. Yes? Um, we started out very much so taking his time, writing in the lines, keeping his figure spaces, and then at the end, he started jumping in and started writing the figure in smaller. Excellent, so we've seen some difference in the quality of the printing and from the beginning to the end. It seems like maybe there's some fatigue issues there. Denise. Some voice at the end, because he's made Ah, but maybe it's making bigger, like louder, and there's an exclamation mark. And one of the things I was noticing um, was around organization. Because it, it seems like it's kind of in an odd order. I can smell the ocean, what is it? The ocean smells like salt, I can see a shark. It's like four random sentences that are all about the same thing but don't seem to be in a clear, cohesive manner. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna triangulate our data. So we've got the student conversation. So student work study teacher was sitting and she, she talked to Jack about his work. So what she's done is anything she observes is in brackets. So observations are in brackets. So she observes that stu Jack writes, I, and then I'm assuming, because this isn't my documentation, that when she stretched out like this, it took him a little bit longer, but I can smell the ocean. He looks back at the book, this is to Shelley's point, to the word smell ocean. So that's what strategy he's used. He's looking back at the book. And then he writes, it smells salty. Then he writes, what is it? I can see a shark. So the order that the sentences appear at on the paper are not the order that he wrote them in. So when I see the order that he wrote them in, now it makes more sense. So in his mind, he's got the organization part. It's just when he's writing it on the paper, he doesn't necessarily have the idea that you start and you keep going and you have that left to right return sweep kind of thing. It's like I write and then I needed to write, what is it? And for some reason he jumped back up to the top line and squished it in there. So the way it appears on the paper isn't the way that he wrote it. So there's some issues around organization there in terms of how he's organizing his thoughts on the paper. So the student work study teacher says to Jack, let's look at the success criteria. So Jack reads the first criteria. I can start my sentences with a capital. 
Check. And he points to I. And then he reads the second criteria. I use a capital for I. Check. Reads the third criteria. Make finger spaces. Kind of check. Check in an X. Reads the fourth criteria. I can use the word wall. Check. I can the. Reads the last criteria. I use punctuation. Check. Points to the exclamation mark. And the student work study teacher says, can you make any changes? So Jack's already given himself a check and an X for the whole make spaces thing. So he knows there needs to be some changes there. So what he did was he went back and he drew a line between the words that don't have spaces between them. So I can see a shark and I think under what is it, we've put that vertical line to donate those sort of notice where those spaces aren't there. So we put a line between those words instead. And then the student work study teacher says to him, what does this documentation show about you as a writer? And he says, I'm a good writer because I think. So I want you to you know, just take three or four minutes at your table. Now that we've got the triangulation happening, we've got the observations that the teacher made as well as the conversation she had with Jack. What are we thinking now about him as a reader and a writer? Okay, so now that you've got student product, plus you have the conversation and the observations from the student work study teacher, is there anything in your thinking about this student that may have changed? I was saying my own thoughts in terms of organization had changed because I thought at first it was kind of like these random four sentences that didn't really flow. But now that I see what order they went in, it's like, oh, okay. I will share what Northwood was sharing with me. I'm trying to be the queen of wait time here. Um, they were noticing that the success criteria were very much guiding the student to look at the mechanics and the conventions of writing. Spacing and capitals and punctuation. And what I loved was that even though the success criteria were guiding him to look at the conventions and the mechanics of writing, he still understands that being a good writer isn't just about mechanics. Being a good writer is that you think and that you have ideas that you are going to share. And to me, that's like one of those like, oh, kind of moments. I, I, I think that's really important. And as a teacher, it would make me want to then reflect on my success criteria. And do I need to think at, about that in a slightly different way? And Nancy, you're saying, ah, you could put your hand up and share this <laughs> with the group. Um, but it does, it helps us kind of see the student. The other thing that I notice, and probably because I've, we've done this for four days, so I've had a lot of time to look at this student work sample, is that when it says, um, I put a capital at the beginning of my sentence, he, puts, he points at I, which is the very first word on the page. And when the success criteria asks him, do you use punctuation, he points at the exclamation mark at the very, very end. And there's no reference to him looking for punctuation at any of the other sentences or capitals. So I'm wondering, and what I would want to investigate more with this student is, does he really have an understanding of the idea of sentences? I'm thinking that maybe this is one big giant sentence to him with a capital at the beginning of his writing and you put a punctuation when you're done writing and that's it. You know you have those kids who overgeneralize and put a period between every single solitary word? And then this is kind of the opposite extreme where you just write everything that you're thinking and then you put punctuation at the end. So that was something that was changing with my thinking. Okay, here's where we're going next. In your black folder is this green sheet. We asked you to do the four student profiles and bring those with you. This is sort of now an, an attachment. For, there should be four of these, one for each student. So looking at the students that you have, the, the 
the data that you have so far, the, the knowledge that you have of them at this point, you've got this one and you're looking at, okay, for that particular student, what are some considerations for instructional strategies that I think might be effective for that student? What are some considerations for assessment based on what Mark has been speaking about on the idea of triangulation of data? What are some considerations of assessment for that particular student? And what are some resources and support that I might use? When you're working on that, we've also passed out the um, Learning for All placemat. And on the inside of the Learning for All placemat, the, um, the row going across pretty much in the middle is instructional strategies. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of them. Choose a few that you think might be particularly effective for that student, for each of those four students. So if I'm choosing an instructional strategy that I think might be really effective, and maybe I really need to focus on vocabulary, then for me, for my professional learning, what does that look like? What do I need to do so that I can do that effectively?